Hey guys, how's it going? This is John Schwartz. Welcome to Investment Property Nerd. We're currently in the car on the 101 headed to a new listing that dropped just last night in the Los Angeles neighborhood of City Terrace. Now I really like City Terrace. It's a neighborhood on the east side. It's very close to the neighborhoods that have really rapidly gentrified in the past couple of years. I'm talking about Highland Park and Eagle Rock, even Boyle Heights to an extent. City Terrace hasn't gotten as much attention uh, and the neighborhood is not as hip as its neighbors, but it's a very hilly neighborhood. And one thing that Angelinos like are hills and the views that come with them. So I'm very bullish on the long-term prospects for City Terrace. Not to mention years ago, back in the run-up in 2005, 2006, a friend of mine bought a duplex at the top of a hill in City Terrace, converted it back into a single family home. And what was really notable about it is that that home was the, was the set for Robert De Niro's home in the movie Heat. So we called it the Heat House. The property we're going to is a great prospect for a house hack. It's a single family home, but it's actually two units. The upstairs is two beds and one bath, and the downstairs is one bed and one bath. Now, being as this property is a single family home, it presents some unique options. The first option, which I cannot recommend as a realtor and cannot speak to legally because I'm not a lawyer, is to rent out the downstairs non-permitted unit to a tenant as is. The other two options, which I can recommend as a realtor, but cannot speak to legally because I'm not a lawyer, is to firstly have the downstairs permitted as an ADU. Now, based on the pictures, the workmanship of this home looks pretty good. So I'm hopeful that there's a good chance the downstairs can be permitted without needing any additional work or not much. And my ADU specialist tells me that the county of Los Angeles, which is where this property is located, is especially lax when it comes to permitting completed work. City Terrace, FYI, is in unincorporated Los Angeles County, which are parts of LA County that aren't actually engulfed in a city. So City Terrace is right outside of the city of Los Angeles, but it's not in the city of Los Angeles. It's in unincorporated Los Angeles County. The third option is to Airbnb the downstairs one bed, one bath unit. Now in Los Angeles, you can only Airbnb parts of your primary home. A separate unit cannot be Airbnb'd. So if you own a duplex, you can't list the other unit on Airbnb. However, if you own a home and the home happens to have a bedroom and a bathroom and even a little kitchenette with a separate entrance, well, it's still part of your home. You can still list it on Airbnb and get the permit to Airbnb it all year. So if you choose for a couple hundred more dollars of income per month, you can Airbnb the second unit. Anyway, I'm really excited to see this building. I'm almost at my off ramp on the freeway here, so I gotta go, I'll see you inside. All right, so this is the front gate to the property. The property's on a hilly street, so you have one of these homes where there's a gate and you don't see anything behind it. You come through the gate and down a few stairs, and you have this nice outdoor space. This is basically the front of the upstairs unit. Go inside the front door into this little cramped stairway and right to your right, you have the first bedroom. Obviously the walls need some painting. And out the window, you can see that solar panels are attached to the building. You can also get a peek of the view there. Here's a closet. So heading downstairs, this stairwell is a little cramped. The headroom right here is a little tight. It's probably not to code. And here is the living room of the upstairs unit. You can see a gas fireplace on the wall. Plenty of space, lots of sunlight from that window. Here's a small hallway leading to bedroom number two, another good closet. I don't know why I work so hard to see the view out that window. And here's the bathroom. Sizable, decent, includes a strange washer dryer setup. Then we head into the kitchen, which is a nice size. Wooden cabinets that can be painted. And another gas fireplace. Now right outside the kitchen is my favorite feature and it's this great big wooden porch with massive views.
really great views. Primo Los Angeles views. And a big backyard down below. Now this looks like some cheap astroturf covering the ground. Ah, and a nice place to sit to enjoy the setting sun. And there it is. You can see on the right there is the downstairs tenant's private access to their unit, which we'll go into now. So first we enter the kitchen, which is a comfortable size. There's no stove now, but there is a gas outlet to put in a stove. I do wonder where the refrigerator would go, but there's room for a small fridge. The living room is long and narrow and doesn't have that much sunlight. The bedroom is pretty identical to the living room. Small window, long and narrow. And the bathroom is actually quite sizable. Now one thing that surprised me about this space is that the floor is painted concrete. And here's one more view of this city terrace house hack. All right, so let's run the numbers on our city terrace house hack and see how they look. So here we have Investment Property Nerd's house hack calculator, which you can grab for yourself at investmentpropertynerd.com backslash house hack. Here we have the basic property information, the address, the property type, it's a duplex. Here we have the unit layout. Unit one is the upstairs two one where the owner is going to live. Unit two is the downstairs one one which we will rent out. Now in this case, current rents equals market rents because the unit is being purchased vacant. So we will immediately get market rents. Now to find market rent numbers, I use rentometer.com. Here's their report for the property. As you can see, median rent for a two bedroom is 1948 and median rent for a one bedroom is 1500. However, that downstairs unit, eh, it's, a, it's a little cavernous, it's a little dark. I don't think it would achieve median rent. I think we would end up below median rent. Now, as you know, median rent is a 50% mark. Half of units rent for more than $1,500 and half of units rent for less than $1,500. In this row below median rent, we have 25th to 75th percentile. This tells us where the 25th percentile unit rents and where the 75th percentile unit rents. So the 25th percentile unit rents for $1,241 and the 75th percentile unit rents for $1,690. I'm gonna go with this 25th percentile number. I'm gonna assume that the unit downstairs, because it's a little dark and cavernous, is not going to rent for the median 1500. Best to be conservative, right? So that's where we get 1948 as current and market rents for the 2-1 and 1241 as current and market rents for the 1-1. One, one. So now we have purchase information. The purchase price is 629,900. We're gonna, we're gonna use 20% down for this example at an interest rate of 2.75. I cannot believe how low interest rates are. I've been seeing 2.6. Our down payment's 125. There'll be no upfront mortgage insurance. Our closing costs, we're gonna estimate 2%. And I'm gonna throw in $10,000 of renovation budget just to maybe get some new appliances, put some new paint on the walls. Just make the place look a little nicer. So our all-in is gonna be a little under $150,000. Here I have uh, our forced equity equation, but I'm not really accounting for any forced equity. Uh, if we put $10,000 into the property, it'll probably be worth about $10,000 more. So here's our pro forma. This is what month one should look like. Our income from the downstairs unit will be about $1,241. Let's take a look at our expenses. The mortgage payment's gonna be $2,057. Taxes per month will be $667. Insurance I'm estimating at $105 per month. That's a little more than $1,200 a year. That's a conservative estimate. It probably won't be quite that expensive to insure this building. We have no mortgage insurance because we put 20% down. Also no property management fee because we're gonna manage that one unit ourselves. For utilities, I'm estimating $60 per month. That's a pretty good guess. And you know, since it's a one one unit and there'll only be a single individual or a couple living in it most likely, uh, the cost of water for that unit is probably closer to like $45 or $50 per month. But again, best to be conservative. For maintenance and capex reserves, I put in 7%. 
The building looks pretty good, but um, obviously the general inspection will tell you a lot, but you never really know. For other expenses, I put in $50 a month just for a gardener, maybe occasionally. And for vacancy, I'm uh, assuming a 5% vacancy rate, which is a little bit above the long-term Los Angeles average. Now that leads to expenses of $3,088, so our cash flow is negative $1,847. That means, for starters, to live in a unit that, on median, should cost $1,948, you're paying $1,847. So there's a little bit of savings. Beyond that, you're going to be getting principal pay down from the mortgage payments. And each month, that's $902. Now, as we've talked about, principal pay down is money that comes back to you in the form of equity in your property. This actually boosts your net worth $902 each month. Why? Because your net worth is your assets minus your liabilities. Your asset is this building. Your liability is the amount of money you owe on this building. So if that number drops $900 in a month, the amount of money you owe, then your net worth goes up $900 in a month. So that's how I get to your rent equivalent, which is your monthly out-of-pocket minus the increase in your net worth, and that gets us to $944. So really, living in this unit, which should rent for $1948, it's like you're renting it for $944. Then, finally, the icing on the cake, appreciation, which we're assuming at 4% annually, which is like two-thirds of the long-term average Los Angeles appreciation rate, appreciation should add to your equity about $2,000 a month. So when you add that to your rent equivalent, you end up with a net worth gain of about $1,100 a month. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Principal pay down actually affects your net worth month by month. Appreciation, it's like play money until you actually reap it through a sale or a refinance. So I separate these two things out, your rent equivalent and your net worth gain. Net worth gain is happening in the deep background. Rent equivalent is happening in the immediate background. It's actually an, an, an impact on your net worth each month. So let's go to the projection. So this property is projected to cash flow after two years of living there. Obviously, there's no need to refinance out of PMI because you don't pay any PMI to start with. Now, what this looks like is in year one, you'll pay $1,847 a month out of pocket to live in this unit, though you'll be reaping that principal pay down. In year two, your cost of living there goes down a little bit to 1832, and then you can move out and the property basically just pays for itself. It creates $17 a month in cash flow. However, the equity gain, which is this light blue area, is over $3,000 per month, which is fantastic. Now, as far as house hacks go, this is a borderline example. It's a pretty good house hack. It's a nice two bedroom apartment to live in for the next two years, and then you can move out and you have a nice well-located duplex in City Terrace as part of your portfolio. Of course, when you move out in two years, the cash flow is extremely minimal, and it takes a couple of years for the cash flow to work up to something significant, like, say, this $400 in year eight. It takes a while to get there. However, if we can change the purchase price to, say, 609 flat, then we're in a position where we can move out after just one year, and let's say we do. Well, then in year one, we're paying $17.53 to live in the unit. Cash flow in year two is going to be $4 per month. But keep in mind that this $4 per month already accounts for vacancy and maintenance and CapEx. It's not like you're going to be collecting $4 a month and then if something needs to be repaired, the only money you have to repair it with is this $4 a month. No, the repair is already accounted for. So you'll make any repair necessary and after that still have $4. And to me, that's how a property pays for itself properly. So again, like I said, as a financial investment, this is not a knockout house hack, but it's in a great neighborhood, it's a very comfortable 2-1, and it seems like a good option for someone who's looking for a property in this price range. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this house tour and the math behind it. I have a very exciting house tour visit coming up this week. I'm gonna tease it to you so that you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that you're notified when that video drops. In the meantime, if you have any questions about house hacking in Los Angeles, please get in touch. I'm John Schwartz, and this is Investment Property Nerd.